Domine Deus meus, exultais que super terram habitación de meam, et promote de fluente de pecato sum. Invocavi Dominum Patrem Domini mei, ut non derelinquant me et vitro et gracionis mei, et in tempore super borum sine aututorio. Laudabum nomen tuo mesidu rei, et calodabum ilu di confessione, et exaltita resurrectio mea. Et liberasti me de restrizione et erutuisti me de tempore iniquo. Proteria compitebore claudem dicam tibi, Domine Deus nostre. In Deo gratias, adjuvabit eam Deus volcus suo, Deus in medio eus non comovebitur, luminis in petus decipit a civitatem Dei, sanctificabit ad un atum suum altissimus. Alleluia, alleluia, ec est virgo sapiens et una de numero prudentum. Alleluia. Dominus Vobiscum, et cum Spiritu Tuo, sequentia Sancti Evangelii secundum et Teum, Gloria Tibi Domine, in ilo tempore, visit Iesus discipuli sui parabolum hanc, simili es regum celorum causauro abscondito in agro, quem qui in veni como abscondi de pregaudio ilius vadi, de vendi duri vesse quae habet, et demet atrum ilum. Iterum simili es regum celorum, homini negoziatorni, credenti bonus margaritas, Inventor altim una preziosa margarita, abiit e vendimit omnia, que abiit e demideum. Iterum simili es regum celorum, sagim ne misse e marre, et ex omni genere piscium congreganti, quam cum in pleta vesit et ucentes, et secus litus edentes, deligerunt bonus in vasta, malus autem foris misserum. Si terit in consumazione seculi, ex ibunt angeli et separabunt malus de medio justorum, et mitem reus in caminum minis, i vieri pretus estrito densium. Intel existis ae homnia, dicunt ae, etiam, ae tibis, ide ae homnis scriba doctus in regno celorum similis ae homini patra familias, qui profet et ausauro sua nota ad vetera. Nas tibi Christi. is the feast of Saint Luina, virgin martyr of Sussex. The epistle is taken from the Book of Wisdom. It was thou, O Lord my God, that hast prospered my life on earth, and now when I prayed to be delivered from the death that was ready to overwhelm me, I made my plea to the Lord, my own master's father. Would he leave me unaided when I was in distress, when my enemies were triumphing over me? I will extol thy name unceasingly with grateful praise. My prayer did not go unregarded. Thou didst rescue me from deadly peril, didst save me in the hour of defeat. Shall I not give thanks? Shall I not praise thee, O Lord our God? And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. A man has found it and hidden it again, and now, for the joy it gives him, is going home to sell all that he has and buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is as if a trader were looking for rare pearls, and now he has found one pearl of great cost, and has sold all that he had and bought it. 
Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea and enclosed fish of every kind at once. When it was full, the fishermen drew it up and sat down on the beach, where they stored all that was worth keeping in their buckets and threw the useless kind away. So it will be when the world is brought to an end. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the just, and will cast them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you grasped all this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. And he said to them, Every scholar, then, whose learning is of the kingdom of heaven, must be like a rich man, who knows how to bring both new and old things out of his treasure house. And there is also today a proper last gospel for the vigil of the uh, feast of St. James the Great tomorrow. And it is a continuation of that according to St. John. At this time, Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. This is the greatest love a man can show, that he should lay down his life for his friends. And you, if you do all that I command you, are my friends. I do not speak of you any more as my servants. A servant is one who does not understand what his master is about. Whereas I have made known to you all that my father has told me, and so I have called you my friends. It was not you that chose me, it was I that chose you. The task I have appointed you is to go out and bear fruit, fruit which will endure, so that every request you make of the Father in my name may be granted you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Nomine Vatis et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissima, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this, as we said, the Feast of St. Luina, Virgin Martyr of Sussex, and we commemorate today, too, the vigil of the Feast of St. James the Apostle, which falls tomorrow. St. Luina's name, of course, may be familiar to those of you who are regular viewers of this Mass, as she appears at the end of the list of local patronal saints in our mini litany uh, after the prayers after low mass. St. Luina, uh, we're not sure whether uh, she was of Alfriston or Bishopstone. Both uh, places have churches originally dedicated to St. Andrew and both sort of equidistant from the seashore at Seaford which bears some uh, relevance to the story or her story, not of her martyrdom though. We're again not sure, possibly between 670 to 675 AD uh, was her martyrdom. We know that she was very young, possibly a teenager, some perhaps think as young as 11. Certainly she was one of the very few Christians in Sussex at that time, which of course was the last of the Saxon kingdoms to be converted. It became converted, of course, by St. Wilfrid of York, whose name also occurs in our mini litany at the end of Mass, and who is co-patron of this mission. But we think that she was one of those few Christians who existed in the county before St. Wilfrid began uh, his missionary uh, preaching here, which was around 680 AD after his exile from York. Again, we're not entirely sure how she died or why she died. It's almost certain, of course, having been honoured as a martyr, that she died for her faith in Christ and that she refused to denounce that faith. Whether that was because she refused then the hand of a suitor, having dedicated her virginity to Christ, or whether uh, simply because she was a Christian and would not yield to the uh, pagan practice of her kinsfolk and villagers, we're not sure. Again, we're not sure how she died. Certainly it would seem a sharp implement was used. Whether she was cleft in two, as is suggested by a carving on the Easter Sepulchre in the Church of St Andrew Alfriston, or whether she was uh, slit by a knife at the throat or a sword stabbed through her throat as is often otherwise depicted we're, not, we're unsure but 
she certainly died a young martyr for the Christian faith in the Saxon pagan kingdom of Sussex around the end of the 7th century. The village of Seaford on the sea coast comes into play a little later on, about 300 years after uh, the deaths of martyrdom, when a, set, when a, a monk called Borgeus from Flanders uh, comes by ship and uh, originally intended for Dover with a great treasure chest on board. But because of stormy weather, they get diverted along the coast and have come to Seaford. And there he sees uh, a church in the distance and makes his way there. And upon entering the church is struck by the air of sanctity that uh, filled the place. And on closer inspection, he sees upon the walls various parchments illustrating stories of miracles and healings at the intercession of a young local virgin martyr saint. Upon inquiry with the parish priest, he learns that the, that the, name, that the name of the saint is Luina, and he determines there to offer mass. Now it seems that Bulgarus has a bit of a reputation. <coughs> Even Drogo, the chronicler who records this story, says that he was a good thief. It apparently came to Bulgarus after his mass and sitting before the shrine of Saint Luina that this saint, with all her clear ability to answer prayer of intercession and healing powers, would be a good prize for his monastery at home in Flanders. And so in the middle of the night, while protesting to the parish priest that he is desiring to keep a vigil before this saint's tomb, while no one is looking, he attempts to crack open the tomb and reaches his hand inside to retrieve the precious bag of bones. This he does. Apparently three times whilst trying to leave the church, a few bones drop to the floor. This he takes not as a sign that he should leave all of the bones behind, but that perhaps just these few little ones that keep falling out are meant to be left. And so he carefully returns them to the tomb and closes it up. He then makes way for the village of Seaford back to his ship. And there uh, he informs the crew of his newfound treasure. A great storm uh, brews up in the channel and the crew refuse to take to set sail, possibly suspecting that this local saint was none too pleased with her kidnapping. This, however, does not deter Borgarus, but eventually uh, the next day, uh, when the uh, sea is calmer, uh, the captain sets sail. The crew, however, leave Bulgarus behind, having sent him on a shopping errand for food, but not without taking the relics themselves. They return to Flanders and the captain delivers the saintly cargo to the local monastery. Eventually, Bulgarus finds another ship and makes his way home, presumably escaping the discovery and detection and suspicion of the villagers near Seaford from the shrine. And there in Flanders is our saint uh, venerated. Initially her relics uh, were put in the library, uh, then uh, they were to be transferred uh, into the church. Apparently on the procession uh, a chap with liver disease or kidney disease was miraculously healed as he knelt when the shrine, when the reliquary went past. He determined then in thanksgiving to uh, give a votive candle equal to his height uh, at her shrine and determined that whenever her relics were exposed he would accompany them. 
Indeed, it would seem that despite a displacement, St. Louina was still efficacious at granting the intercessions and requests of those who sought in faith her aid with God, so that miraculous healings uh, still occurred. So that is the story, as it were, of Saint Lorena. And she is patron, uh, one of the co-patrons of the mission here. She is patron of the uh, little oratory at, uh, at um, Buxted, uh, together with Our Lady of Walsingham, with whom she is uh, commemorated, as I said, in our mini litany at the end of Mass. And despite the fact that we seem to have few details of her life, or that what we have seems to be sketchy. Nonetheless, she still has, and her memory has, a great deal to offer us, contemporary Christians, in the present age and generation. For many of us, it is a sad thing to say, but nonetheless statistically true, many of us as Christians, particularly in this city, of Brighton and Hove are rather like Lorena, rare amongst our neighbours. Indeed, despite the fact that many cultural Christians still exist, and uh, often uh, it is still the case, I believe, that uh, upon signing up for the army or uh, the police or any kind of uh, service to the crown, people still tick C of E even if they are of no actual religious practice whatsoever. The truth of the matter is that our culture has been increasingly secularised, that few and far between are true practising adherents of the Christian faith. And as we've discussed recently too, there are even fewer of those who are truly adhering to the beliefs and doctrines and practice of the faith, there being such a broad apostasy even within the church and across all denominations, where old heresies have reared their ugly heads in new words and new semantics and new guises, but nonetheless still attacking and refuting central dogmatic truths of the faith like Christology or the Trinity, the very nature of Christ himself, whether he was God made man or just a good man or a good man blessed or anointed by God, etc, etc. There are a great many within the church who aren't actually, despite the fact that they may themselves describe themselves or believe themselves even to be Christians, many of them are in fact uh, not confessing the true faith. And as we've reflected before, the true faith is that faith which we have received from the Apostles for the last 2,000 years, that single deposit of the faith once delivered to the saints, as St. Jude records in his epistle, that teaching, that body of teaching, that the Word made flesh, God incarnate, Jesus Christ himself, imparted to the Apostles in person, who sat at his feet and heard his teaching, who accompanied him and were witnesses to his miracles, who witnessed and gave witness both to his crucifixion and his resurrection, and who were charged by him at his ascension to proclaim his gospel of good news of redemption. That same faith which has been always believed everywhere and by all, that lovely ready reckoner given us by St. Vincent of Lerins in his Comedy Forum, which we can use ourselves to contrast with contemporary theologies and teachings to test whether they are indeed of the true faith, whether they are indeed of the true gospel, whether they are indeed worthy of listening and abiding to because they have been proved to lead souls to holiness and to salvation. The reason why, my brothers and sisters, that we as Orthodox Catholics 
are so hot on what is true and what is not true is because we are and take seriously the business of the salvation of souls. Because we believe that Jesus Christ as God is the same yesterday, today and will be forever. That he is Alpha and Omega. That he himself and his teachings contain an objective truth about our understanding of the universe and of the world and of our purpose as Christians, of our purpose as beings. Our Lord himself promised the church the advocacy of the Holy Ghost who would lead us into all truth. But as we have reflected many times before, that meant to our, in, our understanding over time would increase about those objective and eternal truths that our Lord himself taught when he lived upon this earth. Not that centuries later new dogmas and new doctrines could be taught. Rather that the Holy Ghost would abide with the Church to indeed protect as well as enlighten the minds and hearts of souls who truly desired to be at one with God both in this life and in the next. Which of course is our purpose. It is the reason why we exist and it is the reason why we as Christians recognise ourselves as children of God. Some of us are old enough to remember the penny catechism. Why did God make you? He made me to love him, to serve him, to be with him in this life and in the next. And that, my brothers and sisters, in many ways reflects what our Lord Jesus Christ himself says is the first of the two great commandments in his summary of the law. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And as we reflected only yesterday, if more of us as Christians so ordered and lived our lives that God was indeed first in all things in our lives, then we would find the practice of charity toward neighbour so much more easier than otherwise we might find it. And indeed, in a large part, the apostasy that exists in the church today has been the, for, the, for, has been the forgetting or obfuscating this first of the two great commandments. So many have focused on the second part of loving neighbour. And they focus so much on that that they have forgotten the first part about putting God first and above all things. It is only in truly loving God and loving God in truth that we can truly love one another. And when we see in the lives <coughs> of the Apostles <coughs> and of those whom Holy Mother Church for generation after generation has presented and upheld to us for their witness and their testimony the saints of successive generations they have demonstrated to us how those who keep God first and foremost in their lives truly achieve holiness of life, truly fulfill God's purpose for their lives and proclaim the gospel by their lives. And this, my brothers and sisters, is what's so blessed and wonderful about this little otherwise unknown saint of Sussex. 
For despite all the sketchiness of the details of her life and of her witness, yet her name and her memory has endured to this day. so that we might remember that in darker times than now, in more ignorant times than now, when life was generally much harsher than it is now, a young Christian girl remained steadfast in the faith even to embrace death. Now, as we've reflected before, we may not ourselves, at the present time, face the prospect of physical injury or even martyrdom for the faith. And yet, and only a fool would say otherwise, the Church is enduring a persecution at this time. Christians are indeed being persecuted at this time. And I'm referring here to Christians here, not just about those of our brothers and sisters in the faith who are losing their lives, who are being martyred in other places in the world at this time. But Christians here in our Western society, which is otherwise extolling the virtues of equality and diversity, Christians here are being individually persecuted and attacked because and for their faith. The Church's voice in the public sphere is almost non-existent. And in many ways, perhaps justifiably so. For absolute power, as they say, corrupts absolutely. And the remnant, as it were, of that great phenomena once called Christendom that existed in the West, left behind a bitter taste of such power that men abused and manipulated such that others, particularly innocents, were abused and cruelly harmed. And that, of course, is much to be regretted and much to be repented. But the behaviour of a few does not obliterate the eternal truth of the faith and the gospel itself. And just as we might say, like Cain and Abel, am I my brother's keeper? We who are not involved with those sad stories, with those sad testimonies of abuse, must not ourselves take upon ourselves all the blame, nor all the guilt. For that is not just. And our God and our faith speaks to justice. Rather then, it is beholden upon each and every one of us who bear the name of Christ who, and who are members recognisably of his body, the Church. It behoves each and every one of us to bear greater witness and testimony than the sinful few. It behoves us to live truer Christian lives. It behoves us to demonstrate by the living of our lives the truth of our faith. cannot afford, my brothers and sisters, to shy away, to withdraw through ignominy into the shadows, but rather we must seize upon our faith and upon our hope 
and upon that charity which we have received from God and God desires us to share with others, that we may like this young virgin martyr of so many centuries ago, remain steadfast in the faith, remain true and bear true witness to Christ, And so hope to bring others through the knowledge of redemption to a true and saving knowledge of God and of a right relationship with him. Allowing him to embrace them as his children. To share with them his divine inheritance and make of them a part of his kingdom which will one day be, and yet may be glimpsed here by the signs and wonders and presence of those who live truly Christian lives, who cooperate with his grace, who allow that single moment of unique unity with him in the reception of the Holy Communion to change and transform them and enable them to be, yes, another John the Baptist, to be another Peter, another Paul, to be another Wilfred, and to become another Louisa. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Dominus Obiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, parlemus. Diffuse des gratia navis tuis propertia benedicite Deus in eternum, et in seculum seculum.
Erronia secula seculorum. Amen. Un dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tu, sus un corda, habemus a Domino, gracias a Gaumus Domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, vere dignum et justum et te come salutare, non si dicembre et ubico, et gracias a Gere, Domine Sante Pater, omnipotente et terrete, per Christum Domino nostro, Eque me estate in tuo laude da angeli adorando me nazioni spremo in podestates, celi cerrube vetute da beati serafim soci sotazioni con celebram. Concluimos in nostri svoci su termiti ubeste pretamur, supici confessioni di genes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Tabeot, plenis un celi et terra gloria tua, osanna in excelsis. Benedictus cui venit in nome de Domini, osanna in excelsis.
up with that tutorial. Ramia secula seculor rus. Amen. Orde Rus. Precepi salutare cu smarte de bine să duc Sioare Pocatul. Ave Ustice. Pate noastră cu eficienți. Sanctificetul nouă tuum, în venia regnum tuum, fie cu domn trastuvat, fie cu tincerilor eit în terra. Pane noastră în comunion de nobis ordie, vin pe nobis dedica noastră, sigură noastră în mitimul stericoricus nostris, Et ne nos educați în tentația. Se livră noastră mare. Per la mea secula seculor rus. Amen. Ex Domini sit sentero popisco. Et cum spiritu tuo. Ardus Dei, vitoris peccato mundi, misedere nobis. Ardus Dei, vitoris peccato mundi, misedere nobis. Ardus Dei, vitoris peccato mundi, dona nobis pace. Ece alus David, ece qui toli peccato mundi. Domine non sedimus, ut intre sertetum mea, sed tantum de verbo et sed navitur anima mea. Domine non sedimus, ut intre sertetum mea, sed tantum de verbo et sed navitur anima mea. Domine non sedimus, 
Brothers and sisters watching Mass online are unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Ci giudicio e giustizia, Domine, non colombientur mihi superbi, ed omnia mandata tua benidebat, omnem via iniquitatis odio habi. Dominus Obiscum, et cum Spiritu Tu, Ordinus. Divini mundiris lagitati sassias di Caesimus, Domine Deus Noste, ut intercedente beate, Luvina Virgine, Matire Tua, in Eus sempre participazione vivamus. Per Domino Nostro, mi Eisu Christu, Filio Tu, di Te, di Dio da Regno, ad Unitati Spiritu Santi Dei, per l'omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordeus. Sancti Apostoli tu Iacubi, Quesmus Domine, supplicazione placabili, et veniam nobis figlue et remedia sed eterna concede. Per Domino nostro, Iaesu Christum, Filium Tum, 
Ketika itu juga ada yang mengatakan ini tadi kurbis sanggup dari Perlon ya sekura sekuror Amen Indominus obiscum et cum spiritu tu Ita in misa es Deo gratias Nomen Domini Benedictum, et hoc nunc odusque in secula, auditor nostrum in nomine Domini, qui feci celum et terra, benedicat vos omnipotens Dei. Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus Obiscum, et cum Spiritu Tuo, sequentia Sancti Evangelii, secundum Iovannem. Gloria a ti, Domine, in ino tempore dici di Esus discipuli suis. Hoc es precettum meum, pudinicatis in dicem, sicud in exibos. Maiordum haec eleccione memo habet, ut anima suam ponat quis pro amicis suis. Vos amici mei estis, difficere quis coieto precipio vos. Iam non dicam vos servos, qui a servus nescit qui pace et dominus eius. Vos autim dixi amicos, qui ra omnia quaecumque audivi a parte meo nota feci vobis. Non vos me elegistis, sed ego eligi vos, et posui vos ute gratis et fructum et peratis, et fructus veste maniat, ut quodcumque persieritis patiem in nomine meo det vobis. Deo gratias.